so good evening everyone uh, i am a pediatric endocrinologist from bangalore and i like to talk today about uh, something which is very important in the current post pandemic scenario which is childhood and adolescent obesity so before we uh, go to the case based approach on how to diagnose how to treat and how to manage obesity i'd like to uh, discuss in brief about the introduction of obesity so what exactly is obesity obesity refers to the presence of excess fat in the body and as i mentioned it's a very important public health problem and there is increased risk of complications in childhood and this results in increased morbidity and mortality through adulthood as well and they now say that obesity is a global epidemic so what is the definition of obesity there is there are three terminologies overweight obese and extremely obese so the definition depends upon the growth chart that you use and what growth chart you use to plot the weight so if it is a who growth chart it's used only in children less than 9 year or less than 2 years so <clears throat> with weight for height more than or equal to the 97th centile is uh, obese less in children less than 2 years so we use the bmi charts in india we use the iap charts for bmi and there are two cutoffs one is the 23rd adult equivalent and the other is the 27th adult equivalent so any child with bmi more than the 27th adult equivalent is obese and more than the 23rd adult equivalent is overweight so just to show you this is the on the left hand side we have the iap growth chart as i as you can see the orange line shows that the, if, if it's more than that the child is overweight and above the red line which is the 27th adult equivalent means that the child is obese so these are the iap growth charts on the right hand side we also have the iap pediatric friendly pediatrician friendly growth chart where if you don't have time to calculate the body mass index you have the top left hand more corner the tiny box you just have to put the weight and the height of the child and it itself will calculate and tell you what percentile the child's bmi falls in so coming to bmi as i mentioned we mainly take bmi as the cut off to diagnose obesity or overweight but it does have some issues because it does not take in account the lean mass muscular children can also have a higher bmi there are racial and ethnic differences and it was seen that even children with normal bmi up to 25% can have excess body fat so in recent guidelines it states that central adiposity and higher fat content correlate better with the risk of obesity than bmi alone so this is called the y by paradox so these are two professors yudkin and yajnik as you can see there's a different uh, very uh, gross difference in both of their gross physical appearance but both yudkin and yajnik were noted to have the same bmi of 22.3 but when a body fat analysis was done it was seen that yajnik had a significantly higher body fat of 21.2% and yudkin had a very normal body fat of 9.1 so this is what i'm trying to say that bmi does not tell the complete story even body fat assessment is essential so that's why we have uh, we've come up with waist circumference and waist to hip ratios for children any waist circumference more than the 70th centile and waist to hip ratio for adolescent boys more than 0.95 and adolescent girls more than 0.85 is considered as central or abdominal obesity so this as you can see is the waist circumference chart which are there for children uh, we have the age and we have the waist circumference so you just have to plot this and you'll get whether it is above the 70th centile is considered abnormal and we also have the cutoffs here so a little bit about the epidemiology why is obesity the need of the r why is it so important that we talk about it it has been noted that worldwide obesity has tripled uh, and most of its 62% is in the developing countries and uh, of worldwide 14% of overweight and obese children are there and it is projected that by 2030 it is going to reach 254 million out of which 91 is going to be obese and there was a who end obesity by 2025 uh, uh, which has all the countries are completely off track it doesn't look like the end is in sight at all so what about indian scenario in indian scenario it is seen that india has the second highest number of obese children in the world next to china alone and the prevalence of overweight obesity varies from 15 to 25% and
it, this is just a trend, not just in the higher socioeconomic status, even in the lower socioeconomic status as well, and in the rural areas as well, because junk food, processed food, packaged food is very easily available at a cheaper cost. So there is no discrepancy between higher and so lower socioeconomic status when it comes to obesity. And among the overweight and obese children, the prevalence of metabolic syndrome has noted to be 29.2%. And they say by 2025, 17 million children are going to be overweight. So we call obesity also a part of malnutrition. It's called obesity malnutrition because even though a child is overweight or obese with a higher weight and higher BMI, the essential nutrients that is required for the bodily functions are less because one could be uh, uh, because of the high oxidative stress because of obesity. And the second thing is because of uh, improper eating and diet habits. So as we can see, initially, the uh, there was only a single burden of malnutrition that was undernutrition. Now there is a double burden, both obesity and malnutrition, both of them are there, resulting in a global double burden of malnutrition. So what exactly is obesity and overweight and how does it happen? So this usually happens, I'm only talking about exogenous obesity, that is secondary to, uh, there is an excess of energy intake and there is less of an energy expenditure and this results in an imbalanced state. So what are the etiology of obesity? So coming to only exogenous obesity, mainly the main etiology being environmental, which is food abundance. Uh, cultural, endocrine disruptor, socioeconomic status, there is a role of biological also, which says viruses, medications, gut microbes, intrauterine environment, that is if the mother has gestational diabetes or if the child is SGA, small for gestational age or IUGR, they are known to have a higher risk of developing obesity. And genetics obviously plays a role if the parents are overweight and obese, the child also has a higher reason to be overweight and obese. And coming to the behavioral, obviously excessive calorie intake, uh, increased screen time, less of uh, uh, exercise, sedentary lifestyle, and sleep deprivation because of social media use, etc., has resulted in this exogenous obesity. So what are the predictive factors? As I mentioned, if one or both, both parents are obese or if there is over nutrition or bottle feeding during infancy, and as I mentioned, childhood obesity always goes on and spills to the adulthood, resulting in adult obesity. And there are some prenatal factors, like if the mother has a higher gestational weight gain and a higher birth weight and maternal smoking. And as I mentioned, IUGR babies, paradoxically, if they're born with a smaller weight, but if they have a very high infant catch-up growth in the first two years, they are noticed to have high risk of metabolic syndrome and obesity complications. So what is the etiology? As I mentioned, the main etiology is lifestyle and diet the differences in the food choices. So there's high and increased consumption of high carbohydrate beverages, increased consumption of sugar sweetened beverages, eating while watching TV, and obviously the food systems are Swiggy and Zomato, nutritionally inappropriate food with lack of proteins, lack of uh, iron, lack of green leafy vegetables and fruits has resulted in this. And it has been noticed that a study was done uh, 9 to 14 year old children, 93% eat packaged food and 68 consume at least once a week of packaged sugar and sweetened beverages. Lack of physical activity is a very important uh, reason as well because of stress from school, pressure for academic performance and uh, if there is a poor neighborhood safety, parents don't want to send their children for play and if because of the advent of computers, video games, social media, it has all resulted in a very sedentary lifestyle. And it is seen that one in four kids do not have any sort of physical activity, absolutely. Coming to screen time, as I mentioned, it's a silent babysitter. There is a social media addiction, having TV in the bedroom, eating in front of the screen. And advertisements also help to kind of alter the child's eating preferences. This results in sleep disturbances. And uh, so basically the rule or the guideline is the TV viewing hour should be less than two hours in a day. And it has been noted that any child who watches TV less than one hour a, a day, the prevalence of obesity is the least. And in those ch in children watching TV more than four hours a day, the prevalence is highest.